Hello and welcome to the panel discussion in Budapest about an emergency situation uh, in um, Hungarian performing arts. Uh, first, uh, I'd like to introduce our guest tonight. Um, here, uh, Robert Arthur, the uh, actor and director, and the former director of Hungarian National Theatre, and Anna Nadia, uh, dramaturge, representing uh, the Hungarian Independent uh, Performing Art Association, and she's also the artistic director of Panodrama, which is a documentary. Uh, the only Hungarian documentary yeah. um, independent uh, group, and uh, Martin Boros, uh, who is a uh, director uh, representing uh, the Hungarian uh, Independent Performing Arts uh, Association, and he's the, the artist and director of uh, Stereoact, uh, which is an independent theatre company. So the uh, apropos of this today discussion is um, that um, earlier this week uh, uh, appeared in the press uh, language from uh, from uh, the minister, Hungarian ministry about a new law which is uh, going to be in front of the parliament next week, and uh, it uh, it would. If, it's, if it passes, then it would just uh, fundamentally change the whole <coughs> art scene, in, uh, performing art scene in Hungary. So, uh, we should discuss, I hope we can have um, viewers uh, can give some more details about the present situation. My name is Anita Woods and I should be the moderator today. So let's uh, start with the, um, the details of that proposal. Uh, first, uh, the first element is uh, according to which uh, the Minister of Human Resources, it's called in Hungarian, but it is something like uh, Ministry of uh, Culture. So the minister uh, sh would be the person who has the final uh, word in, uh, in appointing directors of uh, theatres in Hungary. Uh, what, what do you think about, uh, about this potential situation? I would uh, turn to Robert first, as <laughs> a former director. Sorry, I don't speak English. Um, so Anna will help us with the yeah. translation. Selling them to get said at the moment. I think it's very simple. For a Kanakáta Nyerence. Hogy aki rendesen van polgár, és aki őket támogatja, és aki benyel a rendszernek, annak van lehetősége. Aki meg nem, az pusztuljon. Tehát ez ennél nem bonyolultam. Tehát egy olyan, olyan erőszakos... Tehát nagyon egyszerűen azt akarják, hogy mindenki úgy gondolkozzon, vagy akiket ők támogatnak, vagy egyáltalán aki bármilyen támogatást kap, az úgy gondolkozzon, ahogy ők elvárják. So it's, I think it's very simple. They are just uh, basically trying to set up a regime uh, uh, according to which, uh, unless you're a loyal uh, ass kisser, you're just gonna uh, drop that, so you won't be present. So everyone who, who gets a chance to uh, make culture or create work would have to be a loyal servant to the regime. And this isn't the first step in the last uh, past few months or uh, years. It is actually uh, the last step or one of the last steps. Why do you consider it the last step? Mert most már minden meg van szüntetve, és minden az ő az ő ő működésük szerint fog működni, vagy az ő szándékai szerint fog működni. Because they just pretty much did away with uh, everything, so uh, by now uh, everything is going to work the way they want it. The same kind of centralization has been yes. going through in education system and also in the science life. So now culture is the next and final step. And they did that theaters. And uh, everything that they don't have control over, they're trying to somehow 
make a giant organization and now according to this new bill they are introducing a new organization national cultural committee uh, something new doesn't matter council. really there, there's it? a new Which council we give directions mm. yes. we have to give directions mm. to our people just maybe very briefly, I'm sure you have heard of the um, fact that they expelled the Central European University. So they had to actually had to relocate to Vienna. So that's uh, you know about higher education, but they already took over public education before that. And I'm sure you heard about the Hungarian Academy of Sciences as well, uh, where they uh, simply put it under a new ministry, and they just took away uh, basically all their funds. So that's that's over as well. Az egész kultúrális területből ezzel az utolsó lépésük kettő kerítésen kihagyják a szakmaiságot. Tehát semmilyen olyan terület nem marad, ahol bármilyen módon is a szakmaiság tudna dönteni arról, hogy hogyan és miként támogatódjon a projektek. Csak és kizárólag uh, loyalitás alapja van támogatódni a projektek. So this is actually the last step also in the sense that uh, from now on uh, uh, there will be absolutely no discussion with the representatives of the profession, of the theatre profession or whichever culture brand or uh, part of culture we're talking about as there was zero discussion before uh, uh, this bill that they came up with and, uh, um, and it's just going to be their decision, it can, it's going to be a purely political decision. And I also think, sorry, the, uh, the method of appointing directors for the theatres is, is an indirect way of censorship. So instead of uh, scanning the scripts or censoring pieces you make, it's just easier to put someone in position who will create art that uh, aligns with their visions and views about you. Be loyal. Yes. Yeah, because I, I don't think we mentioned the fact that, that uh, one of the key points of this new law or new bill is that they are going to, uh, with city theatres, which are um, funded mostly by the municipality, they are also funded by taxpayers' monies, of course, on the national level, they now want to interfere with the appointment of the directors. So they want to have the right to veto uh, from the Minister of Human Resources, who actually is responsible not only for culture, but for healthcare, sports, so it's actually not a cultural person. He's a onco former oncologist, and he has absolutely no clue about culture, and he w should uh, be able to appoint directors. And that's an important point, partly because of uh, the elections, uh, which uh, viewers might know about that uh, in October, in the local elections, uh, the opposition uh, won Budapest, which is yep. an important po po point, and uh, won many other big cities. Which means that uh, if they have this, if the minister has this veto right, then uh, they can decide what will happen in those theatres, and without it, they can't. Some people think that it's a way of revenge. This whole thing that is, that is going on now, which is, I think, uh, it, it partly can be true because most uh, cities that own a theater, most cities that have a theater, have an opposition person since October uh, in charge for the, the city. new mayors. Yeah. 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 I think it's uh, very difficult to consider any kind of uh, step that we could make. Mert szerintem nem rendszer, tehát nem egy rendszerben történnek ezek a lépések a kormány részében. Because these steps uh, from the side of the government are not part of a structure. Szerintem ezek nagyon kicsinyes emberi irigységek, bosszúk és azok, hogy nekem mi jár, sikertelen, középszerű emberek hatalomba való kerülése. Because they are just really, truly petty uh, actions and petty steps, step, steps that um, are uh, directed by envy, revenge, and basically the mediocre people's revenge on, on uh, or gifted. Ones. I don't think the Hungarian government has a vision of culture at all. Azt hiszem, valamelyik náci vezér mondta azt, hogy ha meghajolsz az ott, hogy kultúra, akkor a revolveré ér nyúl. Szerintem a miniszterelnökünk ilyen. I think it was a Nazi uh, leader, uh, historically, who said when he hears the word culture, then he grabs his gun. And I think that's uh, what our prime minister is like. Szerintem az van, hogy ők ne csinálják. 
Tehát akik nem úgy gondolkoznak, mint mi, azok ne csinálják. People who think differently than we do, they should not be allowed to, to, to do culture. That, that we don't want this. Tehát nincs rendszer, és ezért nagyon nehéz szerintem meghatározni azt, hogy hogyan és miként lehet ez viszonyulni. So there is no system behind this whole attack, let's say, so that's, therefore it's very difficult to react or to come up with, you know, counter steps. At the same time, there are ambitious intellects, ambitious artists who are loyal to Viktor Orbán and ones, and for Orbán I think it's still important to have uh, intellectuals uh, who support the Fidesz, uh, the governing party's ideology, and the best way tool for it to place the, the friends, the loyal people in position, because they have this, I think, false vision that if they uh, get in position by force, then they will be able to create uh, and spread the ideology. I think it's not true, because by killing uh, and terminating independent workshops, independent theatres and venues, not more people will go to the right-wing national theatre or to the ultra-right-wing Uisinhaz new theatre. They will not have more viewers, they will just create this whole scene, a uh, cultural desert, basically. But think that's enough for them. I think the problem is that in the end uh, they are cowards. So there was a, a plan on, this, uh, on part of uh, Viktor Orban to put a, a special taxes on the internet because he has no clue what the internet is for. So he doesn't know about streaming, he thinks it's only for Googling and emailing, you know, so he doesn't know about data uh, amounts. So he just came up with this really silly idea. And suddenly, 100,000 people were on the street. This was the biggest uh, demonstration since he came into power in 2010. And they just, uh, you know, they just uh, had shit their pants, you know, that's what happened. So he completely withdrew this uh, proposal. And uh, the real problem, I think, or one of the real problems is that uh, even in such a situation, many of our colleagues, I'm really ashamed to say, are scared, are afraid. So we have this huge demonstration tomorrow night, and all we ask, I think ideally, no theater should perform tomorrow night. It's easy. It's one show that's cancelled. It happens when there is a big snow, so what, you know, no big deal. It costs you, but whatever. But that doesn't even come into question. So, but now we are begging them to start their show an hour late, so that their actors, their workers themselves, and their audience can come to the demonstration. And you cannot imagine the struggle we are having with this. Many of the of the theater directors don't even talk to us. Like they don't even want to. And and like how far, how much further can you go? We're at the wall. What more do you need? How can we talk of independent uh, 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 theater, uh, free culture, if even at this point in history, when this uh, bill might pass in a very short time, actually this week, because they are champions at that. Uh, that even now there is, you know, so much fear and so much uh, cowardice, I must say. I think that's a huge issue. Uh, but still, that's the first point, as far as I remember, when uh, uh, directors from uh, repertory theatres uh, just uh, voiced uh, their uh, contra-arguments. So there is a video uh, on social media just calling for that demonstration where um, many actors and directors appear, and that has never happened before. Maybe that that's a sign of a turning point as well. Though, sok akkor ma meg kell volna történni annak, hogy egyáltalán nem beszélünk arról, hogy közszínházban független. Tök tök borzalom, hogy beszélünk, ma ebben a pillanatban is így beszélünk erről. What should have happened a long time ago? Because uh, you might not know, but there are basically there are, there is a very strong independent scene, which means uh, small companies that uh, that are funded by much. There is some uh, taxpayers' money, but much less, and you have to reapply every year. And there is uh, city city and state theaters, which we call stone theaters because they have a normally they have this big building. And uh, Robi is saying that. Uh, a long time ago, there should have been a really strong collaboration between these two different fields, and we should be talking about the profession, the theatre profession, and not like, you know, city theatres and independent theatres. This should have happened a long time ago. Okay, let's go um, a little bit more into the details of that proposal. 
uh, a very important part of the proposal, the proposal is that um, the NCAO, which is uh, the National um, Culture Fund, Culture Fund uh, will disappear as, um, in its present day form. Um, could you, maybe Marti, you would be the other person to, to explain what kind of consequences it would have on um, independent theatre companies? And not, why, not really why, why is it important? Yeah, th so this, this point is the, the one that integrates many, many different departments or sectors of culture, uh, because this is not only about theatres, it's about architects, literature, photo art, music, uh, movie, music, yeah, and music, dance. Uh, so this Hungarian National Culture Forum, I think it was founded 26 years ago, and it's been a self sort of self-governing, uh, <coughs> independent, um, professional... Uh, Funding body. Yeah, body. yeah, yeah. exactly. And uh, now formally they will keep it, the, its money will remain, but uh, the whole... these, these um, departments for, for each uh, um, cultural sectors will terminate. And from now on, um, this new committee, which we just mentioned, will take over again the right to to um, publish applications and the right to to make decisions on them. So because uh, the until professional background. yeah, until now, just to that, just to be clear, there were committees for each uh, particular art form. And there, there was a system of delegation. So actually, the you know the independent scene delegated representatives, the city and state theaters uh, delegated representatives, and this has become a few years ago much worse because a big government uh, body delegated now the majority. But still, you know there was some kind of system, and there was a delegation, and there was a regularity and a predictability of like twice a year there were uh, co open calls and you could apply for the grants and then, you know, so, so there was that. But now this will be completely centralized because centralization is sort of the central uh, or the main theme of all this. That they That's want the to keywords. have all, one of the keywords for sure, because they want to have all of this in their hands. Um, and maybe just uh, briefly that basically the independent um, companies, uh, theater and, uh, and dance as well, had, were, had three legs to stand on now, until now, for about 10 years since the new performing arts law back then in 2008 was passed, which for the very first time in history said that at, at the minimum of 10% uh, of municipal uh, funds should go to the independent scene. Uh, so we had three legs to stand on. There was a special tax break, I'm not going to explain it because it's too complicated. Uh, there, were, there was an annual funding, uh, uh, operational funds that you have to apply for each year, and the National Cultural Fund, which is basically a project funding body. And now they are uh, cutting the... They, uh, um, half a year ago, they suddenly cut, no, almost a year ago, suddenly cut this tax break uh, thing. Uh, which crippled half half the independent scene. Uh, theaters are closing, uh, and so on and Prices. so forth. Venues, yeah. <clears throat> and now, in this particular law, they will empty this national cultural fund, so it's not going to work for us. And what we have not mentioned, the third major point is that the annual operational fund for the independent scene will be completely stopped. So we had three legs to stand on, and now we have zero legs, which actually means we are done for. That's it. Of course, speaking to an American audience, it's very important uh, to emphasize that we're very aware that uh, independent uh, theaters and performing arts organizations in uh, the U.S. until now were in a much worse situation than we are, because they have almost no money, very, very little private funding or like uh, uh, companies could fund them. But the problem is that the Hungarian, that Hungarian society has absolutely no tradition of private funding, thing of giving back to, the, to society. So, so none of, or very, 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 very little uh, of, of philanthropy, and not just about culture, but about okay. culture. And, and, and also maybe they will be afraid as well in the future, like the companies are the rich people, because if they fund us, then maybe they will be the bad guys as well. 
Yeah, a nationally funded culture has a tradition for centuries. So this is what we were socialized in. So this is not a question in Europe that uh, that the culture should be uh, granted by the by the state. And it yeah. doesn't necessarily mean that you haven't started uh, to find other sources, other fundings, right? Yeah. So I think what we really need to clarify that uh, when we talk about independent sphere, the independent field. It's, uh, it's a field that has uh, over 700,000 viewers a year, which is a big number in a city of 2 million or in a country of 10 million. <clears throat> so this is, this is quite a... It's, it, we don't just have to think of uh, alternative uh, experimental yeah, groups in, working in the basement. This is, this is a, um, it's a big field with venues and prestigious places. Uh, producing over 5,000 uh, pieces or having 5,000 pieces in a year and having over 600 shows abroad, so twice a day basically we are touring with our shows that are produced within the independent sphere. So this is uh, um, the field which is uh, annual uh, subsidy is going to be terminated uh, and it might be only, so for example, speaking of Stereoac, for us, uh, the, the national grant is only one third of our yearly budget. But what is the rest? The rest is distributional incomes and, uh, and ticket sales and co-producers' co um, contribution. But if we are not able to maintain or sustain uh, an infrastructure, if we don't have management and marketing and office and rehearsal space, then we are not able to produce all those that would bring the second and the third, uh, third of our budget. Uh, and this is what is going to happen with, with the whole field. So after they will pass this bill, I think first the venues Mu Theater, Urani Theater, Trofo and uh, Skin and other places will have to close down or dramatically reduce their programming and then since we will have no place to produce and play our productions it will come later the smaller uh, theaters even if there are some theaters that only rely on these places before and didn't get a grant from the Hungarian uh, state will feel the effect. So it's, because these it's, venues uh, have uh, or used to have uh, so operational support yeah. from the state as well. És ami nagyon fontos, hogy úgy elszigetelt művész, tehát nem arra beszélünk, hogy egy elszigetelt kultúra ebben a vállalatban. Ez egy nagyon szem előtt lévő, nagyon népszerű előadások. Tehát ugye ez, 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 egy, ez egy legfontosabb része ennek a városnak. Uh, it's important to emphasize that we're not talking about some isolated uh, works or isolated uh, arts or whatever. It's, it's a very visible part of this city. It's very present, very visible. Tehát, hogy nem arról szól, hogy ez egy ilyen nagyon, nagyon különös, nagyon, nagyon kiemelt, vagy nagyon réteg kultúra lenne, amiről mi most beszélünk. We're not talking about a culture that's like for, you know, very, very small uh, number of people or very thin layer of society. És ebben benne vannak az, 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 a régebbi stílusú közszínezők, és benne vannak a leg, a leg expresszív, a legnyitottabb, a leg, legmagyobb, de a leginkább útkeresőbb társadalatok is. We are talking about a mixture of uh, uh, maybe somewhat more old-fashioned city or state theatres and the most innovative, the most experimental, most exciting, young, fresh. And what's also very important is that lots of young people go to this. Nagyon sok, nagyon fontos része az it's a key part of their lives. Tehát ez egy élő lélegző, it's a, it's a breathing, lévő, uh, you know, very visible part of life. Uh, it's, it's very functional. Most theaters are sold out. So, for instance, the Katon József Theater, which is now in one of the most uh, threatened theaters by this uh, thing about, uh, among the city theaters, has an average of uh, 102% because there are like standing tickets and stuff like that of sold out uh, houses, you know. And it's also important, maybe you ask yourself, so why don't we all go private? The thing is that with Hungarian society and with, uh, with the level of, uh, uh, of uh, monthly uh, salaries and stuff like that, you cannot simply, it's impossible in Hungary 
to uh, calculate, uh, to, to make, make productions which can become, even after two years, which can turn a profit. Because you just can't sell those extensive tickets. There are like one-off events, like when Robbie, uh, when, um, well, I don't know, he does Fiddler on the Roof in a huge arena or something, then that's the only time when they can, can turn a profit. But even musicals, even like huge comedies, it's impossible. So in this society, that is not an option. So it's important uh, to know that. Um, I wanted to say something else, but I forgot some of it. In the meantime, uh, maybe just um, an important question would be now, uh, what do you think about the potential ways of, uh, I don't know, protest first, and maybe if there is any other step you might think of? So we, we kicked off um, a campaign a couple of days ago. The first step was a petition, uh, which was signed by 40,000 people in three days. Uh, there is this protest on the mentioned, which is going to happen tomorrow, and it's a collaborative organization of the independents and the city theaters, especially that, as, as Robbie also mentioned, that there are so many people who work in both fields, so it's, it's no longer a division line, so it's, it's all of our interest. And uh, also we called um, for action uh, all the all the theater directors, managing directors, uh, to make um, a solidar call their audience for solidarity action, to shoot selfies after each shows and read the petition. It's also a quite successful action. But these are all about showing that we we are not naive and we know that this government can push everything through if they really want it. But we hope that if there is a very wide uh, collaboration among the, the society, and if we show force, and if we show that they cannot do everything to us, it happened in history that it, it, had, a, it had an effect. Or, or maybe their inner opposition, because also we know that not everyone agrees with it within the government. So maybe those op op opposing voices will be a little bit more I don't know, courageous and, and we'll speak up. That's, that's the hope, but this is going to turn out in the next couple of days. Um, actually, I think it's in, uh, interesting to see what happens afterwards because I personally have no doubt that they will pass the spell. But, uh, but if we keep on uh, protesting and if this grows, and like I say, they are cowards, so if there are several hundred thousand or million people, then they'll, I think they'll withdraw. I do, do believe that. But maybe it's important to clarify, I'm sure you have heard a lot of Republicans talk about the NEA, what, uh, how it doesn't make sense and all that, how is that art and la 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 la. I'm sure you have seen this like on West Wing, which is my favorite show. Uh, but I'm sure this kind of uh, you know, um, uh, orator is uh, very well known to you as well. Uh, so basically what they are saying is that they can judge what is art. They can judge, they can actually say what is good art and they don't realize that it's, they have no idea, it's not their profession. So they should shut the hell up and they should let those who know what they are doing, the experts, do it. And one other thing which is a very big controversy uh, with uh, the United States is that they keep talking about the government's money. So the term taxpayer's money is something I have to insist on, like like you have this huge bills, like it was supported by the government. Like hell, it was supported by us, our taxpayer, not dollars, but Hungarian form. Any good ideas? Come on. No, so Come on. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think it's also the case that many of the Hungary of the of the young creators could have a chance to work internationally mm -hmm. abroad. Uh, some of us have the chance to work with city theaters that will, of course, not close down after this. But I think it's it's uh, I'm, I'm afraid that the actual losers of this whole situation the whole situation is. The, the audience, of course. the viewers. No, of course. So we are we are not not scared for ourselves. We are we are scared. We are uh, scared for our culture and for for our viewers. Uh, I'm a more romantic uh, character. I'm, I'm the oldest among you. I'm also not going to see that. I'm 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 not going
hozzátartozik az életéhez, teljesen természetesen. I think going to the theater in Hungary uh, is the natural part of uh, uh, the life of many, many people. Budapesten biztos. In Budapest for sure. És azt gondolom, hogyha nem lesz hova mennünk és mit nézniük. And if they have no place to go, nowhere to go. Az, az előbb-utóbb fel fog nekik tűnni. I think sooner or later they are going to realize it. Nagyon nehéz arról beszélni, hogy mit lehet csinálni, hiszen iszonyúan nem tudunk összefogni. It's very difficult to say what we can do because uh, the Hungarian theatre profession just simply can't join forces, can't um, make a common, a, a, a mutual effort together. Yeah. Uh, you can trust the, the audience and you can the gen trust the generation of, uh, of Martin. Um, <laughs> We should go and pick up our pensions and just retire. Yeah. Um, but maybe we should mention as well that many people, uh, many great artists, uh, either left the country, like Arpad Schilling, Kretakur, you know, he pulled the plug on Kretakur, which was by far the next to Peter Bela for decades the most outstanding independent theatre and toured all around the world. Uh, and Viktor Bodo, who also had a company of his own, and he didn't um, emigrate like Arpad, but, uh, but he hardly ever works here. So actually he is uh, one of the most popular uh, international di directors in the German-speaking uh, territories. And, uh, and here, you know, he's almost, he has almost dis disappeared. And he, there are other names we could mention. So we so they reinforces the market set about uh, the yeah. audience who's losing the yeah. most. All right, I think it's uh, maybe it's a good time to finish on that little bit optimistic point. Maybe just yeah. let's mention that the, the, the they, that you guys could help us uh, with uh, two things, uh, or maybe several, but two things for sure. Signing the petition, uh, which I'm sure you'll get uh, from our uh, dear um, uh, hosts. And there is a trick, you have to uh, fake uh, a four code, uh, uh, a four digit zip code. Okay, so pretend you have a four digit zip code because otherwise it won't let you do that. Uh, and there is a letter that we sent out to our international colleagues and we are asking you to send it to the Hungarian Secretary of Culture. And we have the, the address and all of that and CC it to us. So that he gets, you know, we are imagining that he'll get like, you know, thousands of emails uh, from international partners uh, who are um, protesting against uh, this kind of thing. I'm sure, so if, you, if we get an email address or something, we can send you all that information. All right. Okay, so thank you uh, for attention and thank you for the participation. Uh, let's go to the names again. So, Roberta Frodi, Anna Lengyel, and Martin Bolos. And I was on it.